what is the regression problem so uh, this is a supervised machine learning approach and uh, in this approach we are having uh, labeled data set and uh, we are dividing our data into training and testing on a very high level but actually when you start implementing the real world practical problems then you will see you are dividing data into three parts other than two parts but for the time being for this meetup it is fine to understand we are dividing data into two parts and our target variable or target target uh, or the response variable so i'll be using these terms interchangeably target variable label variable label or response variable so uh, this is a continuous value and uh, we for example we want to predict taxi fare or we want to predict uh, the bike rentals or we want to predict like uh, maybe housing price so these are like common um, examples of like uh, uh, regression problem right and there are many types of regression so one is simple linear regression so in which we have only one input variable and we want the output to be a like, like a continuous value similarly multiple linear regression where we have multiple multiple input variables and then we have polynomial regression which is an extension to the linear regression only and here we are basically raising the features by a power right and then we have lasso and ridge regression which are basically improving the machine learning model performance and then we have logistic regression so just to give you an idea like there are many types of regression and these are some of the regression uh, or the types that have been mentioned so what we want to predict today we want to predict the total bike rentals and you know uh, you want to predict the salary of a particular person so usually like you will have a factor so you will multiply that factor maybe uh, the number of years of experience multiplied by that factor and then you get the salary but freshers also they have some salary so let's say number of years of experience is zero so let's say you are predicting total salary and here this is let's say we we take another example we, we are predicting salary and we are saying salary is weight you are assigning a weightage to the years of experience plus uh, so if, if you have some weightage this is like a wi or maybe weightage and you are multiplying years of experience so a lot of people when they talk and uh, they they say that well, you want to predict the salary of a particular person in india let's say so you are multiplying with one factor right some people multiply by two some like some people multiply by three some people multiply by four so you are multiplying that factor with the years of experience but it also depends on many other factors like which college you passed out which role are you playing are you a data scientist or are you like a software engineer so depending on that also this varies but in general like you have seen a lot of regression problem in your day to day life but if you see this simple example where you are predicting salary based on the years of experience then we cannot say that if someone is fresher then the person will not get paid so there is a factor here so i am adding this factor which is basically if number of years of experience is zero even then there is some salary associated so that is a fresher salary right so i hope you are getting some sense that this is a formula for calculating the salary similarly we want to predict bike rentals so we are, we are starting with a very simple model which is a linear regression and here we are having temperature so uh, like you will see in the data set like uh, when temperature is increasing the rentals are increasing but they will not be increasing beyond a certain temperature like after 30 degrees celsius you will see the bike rentals are not going up so basically there is a factor through which like we are multiplying and we want to identify uh, what will be the bike rental when temperature is zero, zero so this is the same example what will be the salary when the years of experience is zero so that is a factor w not or by s or maybe this this particular intercept that we will have so uh, we want to find out these parameters like w1 w0 so we want to find out these model parameters and these are the weightage that we assign to the features that we are having so this is our feature and this is single feature so that's why we call it simple linear regression and later on when we will include multiple features then we will call it multiple linear regression so we will be evolving this uh, problem so first we will look into the problem we will then start evolving this problem with multiple features rather than single feature so i hope you are clear with the problem that we are going to solve today actually before we go into the code i always love to share a lot of theory behind the linear regression where it is useful and where it will fail and what are the solutions where uh, what we can apply so you can see like it is very simple and highly interpretable machine learning model so you can explain to anyone why my machine learning model is giving 
this, this these many rentals so you can explain to the management stakeholders if you are able to be, uh, predict the bike rentals and what will be the benefit if you are a data scientist working for bike rental company so then what benefit your company will get if you are able to predict the bike rentals so you can know your customers maybe you can say how many customers we are expecting today or maybe in or after one month so you can plan for inventory of your bikes you can plan for staff yeah you can you can you can plan for a lot of things like part time staff or full time staff do you like because maybe the rentals are high for 2 3 days or it is for the entire season so you can get to know based on these factors you can decide your strategy of hiring right so a lot of things can be done if you if you know like how many rentals are going to happen in future right so that's why like uh, this this algorithm is going to help or like this this machine learning is going to help you in um, like applying in your business so you are a data scientist working for a bike rental company so uh, that's how we will be dealing with this problem so these are some advantages of linear regression and there are some disadvantages so advantages i believe you are able to relate like it's easy to train less resources are required it can scale with large data set but disadvantages are very very important like the fundamental assumption here is the relationship between the predictor and the final outcome outcome that is why is a linear and which is not true in a lot of cases in real world so then we have other other machine learning models so here we have free based models and then we have polynomial and neural networks so these can depict the non linear patterns also not just linear patterns and linear regression does not work with outliers so we need to do outlier handlings apart from that many predictors if you are having many predictors then interpretability will be low you can explain you cannot explain easily to the management or the stakeholders so it cannot work with categorical data so then you will be going for various techniques of data encoding and then missing data handling is another challenge so it is not for classification uh, use case so we have logistic regression naive based classifier for classification and decision tree classifier random forest classifier and many others and multi collinearity is a big problem and in green color the solutions are mentioned related to the problems that i just shared related to the linear regression let's start with the hands on so we are into the anaconda environment so this environment is set up on my local system so uh, what we are having right now is like we are having data and this data is for the bike rentals and this data is having date time season holiday working day weather temperature a temperature means feels like temperature and then we have humidity we have wind speed we have casual users so these casual users are those walk in customers they are not loyal to your company they just walk in and they take your service and they say goodbye right so they don't want to install any application on their phone so registered users are those users who are having their your application installed like they are loyal to you so you know those people very well so count is like uh, how many bike rentals will happen so today we want to predict this count this is our target variable we want to predict this these numbers right so that's the idea here so are we clear with the data set are we clear like what exactly we are having and what what we are going to do today so this is predictive analytics we are going to do and this is a very common example uh, bike share uh, data set which is available on kegel so this data set has been taken from kegel only so you will you will see later a lot of other uh, other examples given on kegel so you can explore that so let's start with the problem statement and uh, we are starting from the very beginning from the scratch itself like we are having the notebook and here when we start so we will first of all we will be working with panda so i'll be writing import pandas as pd so then we will see what other things are required so right now i will keep it minimal i will try to solve maximum things through pandas maybe data actually there are other things also required for data exploration so we will not be looking into lot of data cleansing right now we will be focusing on building the machine learning model so i will rename this thing right so i will rename and i will just give a name okay so i will move it out because we are having yeah so now it is at the right place so this is fine like uh, we are just importing a pandas and pandas is a knife in the kitchen and we will be uh, preparing data through pandas and we will be reading data from the file we will be performing etl extract transform and load through pandas in like it's a small knife in the kitchen but it is very matured knife in the kitchen so we are starting so let's say bikes and uh, 
this is the data frame that we are creating so you know data frame is nothing but like a table right so you can say pd dot read csv uh, so uh, this read csv method there are can you see there are so many options of reading file data so uh, we have uh, like many formats like google BigQuery, fixed width format so there are many formats org park pickle so you can choose but right now we are choosing csv because my data is in csv format right so this is fine like we are choosing the csv file and then we want to give the path to the data and path to the data is like um, uh, we have data and then by share dot csv right so i am giving the path to the data so this is all set so I'm able to read the data, but I need to pass few parameters here because, you know, I have this data. So uh, I'm right now making this as an indexed column and we will be saying that parse date. So uh, I will be reading it in an intelligent manner. You know, Pandas, uh, it was created in 2008 and it was created in a bank. And in that bank, there was a time series problem and there are a lot of uh, like date time handling functions added into Pandas when it started, right? So whenever a technology starts from any company like Facebook started Hive and they, they incorporated sentiment analysis into Hive because Facebook is a social media company and that's why they wanted to do sentiment analysis. So the prime problem that they wanted to solve with Hive was this like sentiment analysis. So similarly, this Panda started in bank and in, in there, like uh, the, there, the requirement was to do some time series analysis. So that's why I'm actually putting this index column. So uh, there is a very nice method to parse the date time and we have date time here so we'll be making use of that so i'm just giving index column so we are making this index and we are saying uh parse uh date time parse parse dates equals to two so i'm just passing the parameter don't worry about it so uh, so that the data frame i can see file not found so let's see what's the path right now the path is data by share dot CSV. And what's the path right now? I move this file. So let me do one thing. I will do exclamation ls. And here only it is it is showing still showing it's a local only. So I will just use it like this. Okay, no worries. So now this is my data frame, and I will do dot head. And this is how it is. Like I can see five records, and I hope everyone knows now that these are like this season we all understand season the like uh, if you do value underscore counts you will find season there are four seasons one two three four there are four seasons holiday is fine working day weather temperature and a temperature is basically feels like temperature humidity wind speed casual users registered users and count so this is our data right so we want to build a model on this particular data so usually like uh, once you acquire the data initial few steps are to uh, validate the data, understand if data is correct or not. And then you can also fix these things like casual users, registered users count, right? So we want to, uh, we want to change the names because count is not making sense. It, it will be great if we can have another name for this particular variable, this particular feature, I should say, uh, I can re rename it to maybe something which, which is much more intuitive and readable and understandable. So we want to predict uh, the rentals so we can give another name to this total rentals or something like that so i am just having uh, another method so renaming column so i am renaming this column and this is a pipeline that we are like a data cleansing pipeline or you are um, just fixing fixing the things that that we have so i am just having columns equals to and i can give let's say the old name is count and i am renaming it to total rentals total rentals so when I'm renaming it, right? So can you see now the name instead of count, we got total rentals. Now you will see we are able to rename a column and benefit is readability. And let's run head again. Okay. So can you see the problem? You see the problem that I just renamed the column to total rentals, but again, it is showing count. So, but now it is showing count again. It, it did not rename at all any reasons for that like any any ideas why it happened i just renamed i just used a command to rename yeah diptanj we didn't assign anything okay so we did not assign another data frame or the same data frame whatever so that means the modification has not happened in the data frame 
So if you want the mod data, data frame to be modified, so there is a parameter that we can pass, which is called in place equals to true. So after that, when you run, so now the modification has happened. Now, when you run it, so can you see in even in the second statement or you run it again, then also you have the total rentals. So now it is applied. So just be careful when you're working, sometimes you miss this parameter in place equals to true. And because of which the rename is, can you see earlier, we did not specify this parameter and that's why rename did not happen. Uh, so it was, if you go to the next line, it will show the old name, but when you do in place equals to true, then the rename has happened and you see the new name. Okay. Now, so we have now used this parameter. So now what we want to do is we want to build a machine learning model. So we want to understand, maybe we, we can, we can plot something. Let's say, you know, have you heard about like, uh, the pandas also has the visualization uh, method, which is called plot. So this plot method, if you do question mark, you will find, uh, bikes dot plot, and there are a lot of ways we can build the plot. So we have line, we have a, a bar we have, so the, by default, it is line plot, but we have other types of plots also through which you can, you can uh, plot uh, data through Panda, through Panda. So un under the hood, Pandas is making use of matplotlib, which is a visualization library. Library. So if you just go down, you will see uh, Pandas is referring to matplotlib only. In the documentation itself, you, you will find matplotlib is mentioned. So we want to use this plot method and we know the parameters. We want to pass scatter plot. So this scatter plot will help us in knowing the relationship between the temperature and the rental. So we want to plot, we will say kind equals to scatter, right? So apart from that, like we, we are changing because by default, the plot is line plot. Instead of line plot, we want scatter plot. So that's why we change that. And after this, like uh, once, once we have the scatter plot, we want to give the two variables and this scatter, this plot method requires X and Y parameter. So you don't have to remember all these things because syntax is available online also, but important concepts must, you must know. So here it is asking for the X variable. It is asking for the Y variable. So we will specify that because X and Y are, uh, will help, help, will help us. So let's, let's specify that. So what is our X and what is our Y? So our X is like in bikes and bikes and specifically, like we will see the column name this temperature. So let's pick up this temperature. We know that there is some relationship between the total rentals and the temperature. Like let's say I'm a domain expert or I know that temperature will impact my bank rental. So I'm just starting with that in the very initial model that we are building. So this is temperature. And we are also saying this is our Y, which is total rentals. So yeah. So can you see, I am able to plot the relationship between temperature and total rentals. Now, when you're plotting this, you will see there is a lot of, there are a lot of points and they are overlapping with each other. And this is very dark uh, plot. So when there are a lot of points, which are overlapping with each other, and you want to identify like uh, how to uh, know how many points are there at a specific place. So there is a parameter called alpha. So you can even see the documentation and you can specify the alpha point one or point two. Can you see now the plot is not so dark. If you change the, this is a transparency level. You can say, if you make it 0.9, can you see this is very dark. If I make it just 0.2, then it is very light, comparatively very light, right? So you can control the transparency level and it is going to help you like, uh, in knowing how many points are overlapping with each other at one particular location. So here you can say there is only one point, but there are a couple of points overlapping. So you see like, uh, the density or at least intuitive under high level idea, you will get like how many points are overlapping through changing this transparency level. Now, when you see this particular total rentals and uh, the temperature, you will see there is some relationship and there is an evident relationship, which is like, um, the temperature is going up, the total rentals are going up, but to a certain degree after that they go down. So that means there is some relationship. Now. We want to build a machine learning model and we will be training a machine learning model. So uh, actually, uh, if you go to the blog, you will see the Y is total rental and X is temperature and Y is function of X. And we want to build something like Y is equal to MX plus C and there is error term. So, uh, these are pros and cons that you can see overall, what is our goal? Like if you look at the 
uh, picture. So we have data, which is the CSV file, and we will have the intelligent code, which is learning a pattern from the data. And we are getting a trained machine learning model. And this is called training phase. And result of training phases, we are getting a trained machine learning model. So teaching a machine learning model is like teaching a kid. So you are teaching a kid and that kid, you are asking questions and kid is answering that question, right? So basically you are training, this is called training phase in which you are teaching a kid. And this is called quiz, so quiz. you are taking test, you are evaluating, you are checking. So you are checking with the new data and you have a deploy train, you deploy a trained machine learning model or maybe you have a trained machine learning model and then you are getting predictions and then you are checking if predictions are correct or not. So you are taking quiz of that particular child. So this is the high level idea. Uh, so um, overall under the hood, there is a process running which is called gradient descent process. So what is the goal of linear regression specifically is to find out the equation of the line. So, so this is like y is equal to mx plus c. So we, our goal is to find out the slope of the line and the intercept. So in order to find out the best model, best machine learning model. So if you have to find out that, then you have to train this machine learning model on the data set. And there is a process going on behind the scene, which is actually helping us in identifying the right parameters. And what are the best parameters for machine learning model? What is the best slope of the line? And what is the, what are the best parameters of this model? Those, those are the best parameters, which are giving us the least error, least cost here. So the cost, there is a cost. The cost is like the predicted minus actual. So our machine learning model is making mistakes. So we want the mistake should be minimized or reduced. So that's a high level idea. But if you are actually going through one day on linear regression, then we discuss this in much more detail. But if you are not able to get hundred percent, absolutely. Okay. But you can ask questions, but I'm just sharing with you. Like there is a process running, which is during model training. When you train a machine learning model, then you identify these parameters. So what we will be doing, we will be now building a machine learning model. We will be training that machine learning model and we will be identifying which are the coefficient, what are the model parameters uh, we have, right? So we will look into that. So let's go into the code. I hope you are getting an idea that there is some relationship between temperature and the bike rental. So we'll try to incorporate temperature into the uh, model. So uh, we are using uh, scikit-learn, right? So, uh, so let's say we are having features and in our case, we are just taking one, one feature, which is called temperature. Right. So this is temperature and we will be using this, let's say this, this particular, uh, like the features that we are having, we will be using and we will, that will be our X. So from the data frame, so we have bikes data frame and from the data frame, we will be retrieving the features, right? So these are the features. Sorry, I pressed tab key along with this features and I run it. Okay. So if you just see X, we got only one column now because we just extracted the features the only temperature, right? So right now we are keeping, we are starting with simple linear regression. And in simple linear regression, if you go back to the whiteboard, you will see, I discussed, there are many types of regression and we are starting with simple linear regression. We have single predictor variable. So we are specifying that here and we got X and we have Y and what is our Y? So if you know, like bikes, and we want to retrieve the total rental. So let's say total, total underscore rentals is our Y and you can see what is the Y. So these are our rentals, total rental. That is our Y. So we are able to get the X. We are able to get Y. Now we will be using X as input and Y. So Y is function of FX. So we'll be using these two, like this is our input and this is also input. This is output and we want to build a machine learning model based on these parameters. So uh, what, what we will do, we will be using sklearn and uh, this scikit-learn actually Anaconda, we have in, installed Anaconda in distribution. So this Anaconda distribution is already having sklearn and uh, scikit-learn and this library is basically for building machine learning models. So we will be building machine learning models here. We will be saying from sklearn dot here we will, you can always do tab and you will see there are linear models here. We select those and then we say import and then we have linear regression. So we are, we are picking up that. So we, we are able to import a linear model and this linear model, if you just do 
LR equals to let's say linear regression. And here you can say type of linear regression is type of linear regression, type of linear regression is this. Okay, so this is the linear regression model that we got. Now we want to train this machine learning model on the data set that we are having. So in order to train this, so we will be doing LR dot fit and we will be passing what we got X and Y. So let's say what we have, this is our X and this is our Y. So we'll be passing those two parameters here. So this is like model dot fit. This is model training and during model training, it is running gradient descent process and it is identifying it is identifying like what are the parameters that we have. So you can always say LR dot tab and then you can get the coefficient. And you can also say LR dot tab and you can get the intercept. So you got this machine learning model is trained and this machine learning model is a line linear model. And this model is having intercept and coefficient. So this is the slope of the line that we are having and this is the intercept. So y is equal to mx plus c y is equal to mx plus c if you go to this equation so we are able to get the the temperature is the only one input that we have sent and w1 here is what is w1 i will collapse this what is w1 here w1 is this part this and what is uh, our w0 is this this part right this is w0 right so these are model parameters that we got after training our machine learning model now we want to predict what will be the bike rental on let's say today temperature is 10 degrees celsius or maybe uh, after 10 you you know the temperature so you want to predict like what will be the bike rentals so let's do one thing we will say lr dot predict and we will be passing uh, we will be passing let's say 10 degrees celsius and then we got 97.75 approximately 98 bike rentals will happen on uh, on a day when we have 10 degrees celsius temperature so now your question can be like, why we are having so many nested brackets? Like why, why we are talking about, why, why can't we do simply like, we, why can't we pass 10 directly? Or why can't we pass, like if I, if I do it, can you see, I, I get an error. If I just, I, I'm, I'll, I'll show you the error, but you just understand why can't we pass like this? Why we are making like so complicated? So in both cases, it is failing. In this case, also it is failing. In this case, also it is failing, but it works when we have this nested structure. So your question can be like, why we are having this 10 degrees Celsius in a nested format or nested structure. So we are, the scikit-learn is expecting us to pass 2D. So, but we are passing 1D. And the next error, when we are passing scalar, then we get expected 2D, but we got scalar so i hope you are getting an idea that scikit learn is expecting 2d and that's why it is working well now why scikit learn is expecting 2d that is the question that we can discuss now so let's see data representation in scikit learn is like this so number of features right now there is only one feature which is temperature and we are having many samples like you can see the shape of x and y so maybe we go up and we can see the shape of what is the shape of x and, and y? So there are 10,886 records. So there are 10,886 records that we have number of samples and the number of features are only one, which is temperature. And then this is the target. Now, if you go back to the whiteboard, so um, why we are passing is 2D because this 2D is actually like this. Right, this 2D and this is temperature in 4D cells. And why we are passing like this? Because scikit learn expects us to pass like this. So, this is first row. So, let's say you are making predictions or you are doing training. So, it is expecting your data to be in 2D. So, if you see the structure, so this is first row, this is second row, this is third row, and these are features. So, feature one, this is temperature. We only have one feature. So, that's why there is only one uh, feature and then there are uh, like uh, no other features here in this row. There is only one row right now because we are predicting for 10 degrees Celsius. So that's why this is like this structure. I hope you are getting an idea what, what I am saying here, like why we need 2D, why not 1D? Because this scikit learn expects that it should be like this, this nested. Because each row 
represent. So let's say I want to predict for 10 degrees Celsius also, and I want to predict for four degrees Celsius. So in that case, how should I write? So let's do that. And it works very well. We are able to get the bike rentals. Okay. So we are clear that we don't have to pass a single value. We have to pass in a nested structure. So till this point, it is fine, but you can say that I have hundred elements, then how I will write, I will not be writing manually. So then there is a, uh, there is a way to do that. We can say NP dot array and for NP, I will be importing import. I should ideally, I should have done it in the beginning itself. So uh, here, let's say we are having multiple values. For example, you want to do it for uh, zero degrees Celsius, two degrees Celsius, five degrees Celsius, and then 10 degrees Celsius. So you have many. So this is your NP array. So you can say reshape and you can pass the parameters like four comma minus one. Then can you see, we are able to get this and you can just pass this para this particular array as an input. So you can say, this is my array and I will pass it as input and then I will run it. So I'm able to get bike rental for zero degrees Celsius. There's just six. 2 degrees Celsius is 24 and 5 degrees Celsius 51 and 97 for 10 degrees Celsius. So I hope you are getting an idea that uh, with this particular way, like uh, this is reshape method. So you will see reshape is being used in TensorFlow a lot and a lot of other like technologies because under the hood, it is all NumPy. Like NumPy is basically Lego block overall, like for a lot of machine learning libraries, they make use of NumPy. So so that's what we have done. So if you want to do it in like, let's say whatever list you are getting and you want to just calculate the bike rentals for each of them, then you can do it in a generic manner rather than doing one by one. So now, you know, we know the um, overall, uh, what uh, the, the intercept and coefficient. So we will make use of this. What we will do, we have this coefficient. We can multiply this coefficient with temperature. So like we have, let's say temperature is four degrees Celsius plus yeah, plus we have intercept and then you can run it. So we got 42 and if you, this four degree, maybe we, we did it for 10. So earlier we did it for 10. So what do we got? 97. And when we were do, doing for 10, can you see we were doing for 10 and this was the 10 value and what we got 97. Can you see if you do it manually or if you do it through a predict method, both are giving a same value. That means internally linear regression is making use of the same formula are we clear if you do by hand or uh, by yourself and uh, if you do it through predict method both are giving the same value so this that means the y is equal to mx plus c formula is working well yeah so that is a takeaway from this discussion now we started with feature columns which was only one column and i will go back and we will evolve it so we started with temperature so i am now into multiple linear regression and uh, here it to mark up and okay so i am here and i will be using more well attributes or more features right so maybe we are using humidity also right and maybe we can use season so you, you can use multiple variables and then we have features now these features i want to uh, maybe you can have a uh, pair plot you can have scatter plot yeah so you can see what is the relationship through this right so you can uh, you can you can do that like so now we want to build a machine learning model so ideally we should be doing like let's say i want to do pair plot and pair plot is there in c1 so i will be importing import c1 ideally we should do it in the beginning as sns right? So this SNS, we have pair plot. We will be making use of that. And within pair plot, I want to pass these features. So I have a data frame and this data frame, I want to pass this feature. So let's say, and then we have a variable expert and then we'll pass the features that we have. So we want to play plot these, these features and the pair plot and pair plot will show you the overall, like how it is like. So uh, we want to also specify, let's see the documentation and then we'll, we'll write it. So I'll do, go to the documentation and we'll do portion mark. So in pair plot, we have many X squares and Y where. So we'll give the Y where also, which, which one is my Y where. And uh, I will see what other things will help. It's by default, it's fine. You data, we are passing the data, that's fine. So 
height mark plus diagonal times get okay drop any aspect okay so let's do this thing so i will delete now and i will go back here and i will also specify y is equal to total underscore rentals so at least these things are required and then we can also specify this is a regression problem so so this is how it is so i am able to get a very simple pair plot which is showing like how many bike total rentals are there so i can see some relationship so seasons are season is a discrete value so one two three four so um that's why it is showing like this so i deliberately picked up season because it's a discrete value uh, and humidity and temperature so temperature it's like something which is maybe when temperature is going up then there is like bike rentals are increasing and humidity is going up then bike rentals are decreasing. some some relationship let's see uh, there is a pearson coefficient so we can do df dot code and we can find out how it looks like so i deliberately did it so that you can see what 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 we want to find out the total rentals and uh, in total rentals like uh, i am specifically interested in like uh, uh, specifically temperature can you see with temperature and total rentals 0.39 so there is a relationship linear relationship between temperature and total rentals that means if temperature is going up the total rentals are going up but it is not 45 degrees celsius the, the uh, slope it's not one so but it is there 0.4 is here and humidity can you see it is minus minus means then humidity is going up then total rentals are going down so you are looking at this particular row and apart from that uh, you know looking at this particular df dot core this is giving us pearson coefficient and we have Right, so when we look at it, this is a Pearson coefficient. Now, Seaborn also has to sometimes people say that it's very hard to see this particular plot and understand it. So, some people say that I want to uh, see through heat map. So, there are like ways to actually uh, put into a heat map. So, we can say Seaborn dot heat map. So, you can visualize this information in the form of heat map. You can say this is the heat map and heat map higher coefficient then the feature should be chosen it can be highly co highly positively correlated or highly negatively correlated so then uh, it will help us in uh, identifying if feature should be um, chosen or not so that is one approach this is called filter based methods of choosing features and this requires manual like in like inspection and then understanding and but there are some machine learning based approaches also to select the feature uh, it can be highly negatively related also and highly positively related also so you can say mod of this that feature is really helping so through heat map you can see this bar and you can see which features are helping which features are not helping so you will see like total rentals so in this some are very light some are very dark so based on that you can find out okay so i hope you are getting an idea like uh, we can see the features which are highly positively correlated and highly negatively correlated now i want to build a machine learning model so in order to build the machine learning model we will just follow the same approach that we did earlier so we'll we'll have, we already have linear regression so we'll say linear regression and we we have x so we will just initialize our x so i'll just copy and i will bring here this is my x and i am having this now i want to uh, simply build a machine learning model and i i want to maybe have lr dot fit and i can see x and this is yeah this is my linear regression and i can make predictions so uh, this is lr dot predict and here we can pass various attributes various features so um, we can say let's let's do one thing like uh, we can say coefficients let's see can you see now we got three coefficients and we also got the intercept so we have built a machine learning model with these are like three weights three coefficients for each of the features but you know season is a different beast we did not do any data encoding ideally data encoding should be done for improving the model performance we'll see that right now we are looking at it and we see that the coefficients so it means that if you keep other variables constant other features constant and if you increase the temperature by one unit then it will add the number of rentals by 7.86 bikes 
and if humidity is increasing by one unit and you are keeping other things constant then the bike rental will go down by three three bikes right and similarly season but season interpretation is not so easy um, here overall this is the result that we are getting and we want to maybe predict something so what we want to predict so we want to predict uh, for temperature 10 degrees celsius for humidity maybe 2 right so let's take any values so we can say season, for season 3 can you see we got 3 on 3 not 3 right so now can you see the level of nesting it's still so let, let's do for another row so let's say this is one row another row comma and i will copy the entire thing again copy this paste here temperature is 4 degrees celsius and humidity is 1 and let's say season is 1 what is the bike rental 214 so i hope you are able to get like this is one row this is another row and how we are predicting the bike rentals now i want to talk about a problem in linear regression which is called multi collinearity problem so let's say bikes and uh, we know that we let's say we pick up uh, what is multi collinearity problem so when two features in the linear regression are highly correlated then they will cause issues so let's say we are picking up these like features and uh, temperature a temperature and then you you can just do four and you run it so do we have temperature and day temperature so what's that the error temperature and then a temperature so we have bikes so let's say what is there in bikes we will see uh this bikes dot head okay this is fine so we have temperature and data okay i got it so here we so here we have sorry I did not write one more. Okay. So we have two features, and uh, these two features we are passing. Can you see temperature and it feels like temperature? They are highly interrelated and highly correlated. And you you can see there is a relationship. And you can also plot the heat map. And we have just seen how to plot heat map through SNS dot heat map. And you can just pass this correlation into that heat map and then you will be able to visualize this is clearly evident that temperature and day temperature they are highly correlated so when you have features which are highly correlated then they will cause problems for the linear regression because the linear regression interpretability we when we were interpreting machine lean, linear regression model then we were saying that holding other features constant we are changing one feature but now since features are interdependent then they will be like in impacting each other so that's why that's why multi collinearity is a problem so uh, I, I, so if let's say uh, let's say we 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 do one thing like uh, um, we can we can build a model through this we can but the idea sh idea sh I should be very clear that what is multi collinearity problem multi collinearity problem is when you are holding uh, like one feature as fixed and then you are varying another feature but since these features are interdependent on each other then what will happen they will be ripple effect or cyclic effect and because of which you will not be able to explain the results of linear regression to the management that's the problem with the multi collinearity uh, okay so these features are highly interrelated that means like the temperature and a temperature this is 0.98 the relationship so temperature and feels like temperature they vary together so that's why it is very closely related so let's say we are saying x and uh, we are having uh, let's say we are changing features so uh, features equals to let's say we are building a machine learning model with these two features copy and we will paste it here and we'll run it okay so these these are the features and then we have x and then bikes and we are passing the features okay this is fine and then y and y is already initialized that's fine and we can say lr dot fit and then we can say uh, we are passing the x and y right so we are building a machine learning model through these like temperature and day temperature and then after that we want to find out lr dot uh, coefficients and let's see okay now 
let's ignore the intercept if you want we can see the intercept also but the important thing that i want to show here is related to this so let's say intercept is this much so let's ignore the intercept for the timing okay so okay, what do we see like the intuitive understanding is so we have two features which are highly interdependent on each other so it is like the result of machine learning is so using one feature we are able to predict the bike rentals other feature can you see the coefficient is very low for this other feature and this other feature did not help much as such for predicting the final result so only one feature is sufficient to predict the final result but the other feature is very low so that is one takeaway the intuitive understanding behind multicollinearity multicollinearity is a problem in linear regression in which the features are highly interdependent on each other or interrelated so that means df dot core if you see that will be 0.98 to temperature and air temperature this is high highly inter interdependent inter interrelated i should say interrelated and that's why what will happen linear regression they are very good when it comes to interpretability so when you are explaining linear regression to your management or the stakeholders so then you explain in this manner keeping temperature fixed if we vary a temperature by one unit then that bike rentals change this much but you cannot convey this story to your management because when you vary a temperature by one unit and temperature will also vary you cannot fix temperature when a temperature is changing or you cannot fix a temperature when temperature is changing are, are we clear there is an interdependency and that's why explaining such machine learning models interpreting these machine learning models not possible because there are hundreds of features and they are interdependent on each other so some machine learning algorithm they don't do like well so there are some machine learning models like naive based classifier so that is not having any problem related to multicollinearity because there it is not even considering the relationship between the features right among the features so you need to choose a machine learning model based on the uh, type of data that you are having now the next part here is so i am actually going into the sklearn and importing metric and we we have this metric model so here sklearn so we want to find out the um, error and uh, we want to find out like uh, how much error we are making and for finding this we have metric and then you can find out mean absolute there are many matrices for regression so one is mean absolute error mean square error root mean square error so you can actually find out what is the error that we are making so uh, we will be making use of this first of all when we work with supervised machine learning here like um, the label data set we are having and then we will be splitting our data let's say we split our data into training and testing we are having sklr sorry sklr dot model selection import and then we are saying training test split okay so this is another import so i am deliberately doing imports at the time when we need it so that you know like what additional modules we are adding and why we are adding because immediately after that we will be writing some code so deliberately i am doing this this thing right so we can we can have uh, the features so there there are many features so earlier we defined three features let's let's uh, have another features let's say we have humidity and then we have we can have other features also let's say we are keeping only two features humidity yeah and uh, we want to build so we, we can write a method let's say we are defining a method and in this method we can pass the features so maybe we can we can say calculate model performance right so we want to calculate the model performance and here we will be passing the features and we will be having a features and uh, rest of the things we will see like what other things we will be require needing so we will be using that so now we we know that we have to work with the bikes so we will be passing that also let's say this is the data frame that we will be passing so these are the features and these are the data frame that we are passing and we want to uh we want to now uh, work with this particular thing like we will be splitting our data into two parts so we have let's say x x we already know that x we can retrieve through the data frame and we can say df and from features we can get the x and what is y so y is total rental so we can say total rentals we can get from there we are hard coding it here because we are sure that this will be the name of the y variable otherwise we could have passed it as a parameter 
to this method, but that's fine. It's okay. So we want to divide this data into training testing. So we'll be using this method train test split and we will be passing the parameter. So whenever I use any method, so I usually prefer to see the documentation and I will first go here and do the question mark and here it will show you the train test side and it will have, so it will have some examples also in case you want to refer those. So we can, we can use those examples. So I will copy this. Yeah. So don't remember, no need to remember the syntax. I will just copy this. I got it from the documentation itself. So I'll just remove it and I will just put here X and our Y is also side right. So there's gaps and then we can keep it like maybe 70, 30 or whatever ratio you want to keep. like depends. Like we can discuss that, like how, but how to decide the ratio between training and testing. But for the time being, I'm keeping 70, 30. And uh, we have defined these things and I will just ensure that the indentation is fine because otherwise it will be complicated. So till now I am able to define this thing like um, the training, testing and uh, the random state, these things have been defined. And then if the normal process like linear regression is equal to linear regression. Okay. So this is also fine. LR dot fit. And we know that in fit method will be passing X underscore train. And we will be having y underscore train something else. So we can have y underscore train. Okay, this is, this is fine. And we want to now calculate the error. So we want to return the error. And this should be run through metric dot dot metric. Uh, so we have already imported matrices. So I will delete this. I will delete this. DD and then matrices dot root mean square error rms or mean mean h2 mean uh, so this is fine mean absolute error mean square error so there are many errors so we can pick up so let's say mean square error so this is like one right so we can have this mean square error and we can calculate the error. So for calculating the error, we need to pass the parameter. So for passing the parameter, we need to make predictions. So for getting the prediction, so th this will be like LR dot predict and uh, we will be passing. So we, we can see the documentation of this method. You can say, go here, do this, do this and do the question. And this is why true. So first of all, we need to pass the true value and the predictions from the model. So we can now even pick up the um, actual so y true and prediction that's fine that's fine so y true and prediction so we'll delete this and what is our y true y true we know that this is our training data and this is our test data this is truth this is the truth y true comma prediction so lr dot today so this is the prediction that we will get this is the actual and we are comparing actual minus predicted we can calculate the model performance and we are able to get this error. So maybe we can do square root of this thing. So NP dot square root is a root mean square error we will get. Okay. So this is the method that we defined. So what we will do, we will call this method with different features. Why did we define the method? Because we want to call this method with different features. So maybe right now my features are temperature and humidity. I will call it and I will pass it. Let's see how it works. So I got this RMSC. This is my root mean square error. Now I can also try with some other parameters. Let's say I am giving season also, and then I want to see what is the error. So my error is a bit less, but not much difference. Like, so I can try with other set of parameters, like how much error my model is making, how much is the impact. So I can, I can try with a lot of other parameters. So let's say I try with the. Uh, uh, something which is, uh, let's say, uh, let's say I, I will try with, uh, we have uh, one parameter, which is, uh, let's say, if we go to bikes dot head and we, we can open and let's try with casual and register. So I'm trying with casual and register and I am removing this particular thing and I'm running it. Wow. So can you see the difference? So earlier I was having 155. So uh, no error values can be anything. This is root mean square error. It does not vary between zero to hundred. So it is root mean square error. So now if you see the error that we got is very less six. 
so do you think that this machine learning model is good because it we are getting very less error this looks like a very good model now the problem here is called data leakage problem what is data leakage problem can you see 3 plus 13 is 16 8 plus 32 is 40 5 plus 27 is 32 3 plus 10 is 13 so that means the sum of these two is equal to this final outcome so this is called cheating this is called like you are giving an input to machine learning model and that input is actually the output so if you do that like if you try to uh, pass those attributes or those features which are output of machine learning as input to machine learning that is called uh, data leakage problem and sometimes as a data scientist we make these mistakes let's say we don't even know the meaning and we are doing it blindly then definitely it is going to impact so that's why we say that domain knowledge and attribute knowledge feature knowledge is very much important so that when you have this knowledge then you will not be making such mistakes so this machine learning model is suffering from data leakage problem because casual users and registered users you will not even have in production right now you have it in your training environment your when you're doing prototyping when you're doing data science research then you are having these features but these will not be available during the during the production or the real world when more model will be deployed so i hope you are getting an idea that this is called data leakage problem in machine learning in which you are giving output of machine learning as input to machine learning and there where the models will start to give you show you very good results in the training phase or like before production but after that you will see they don't perform okay so i hope you got an idea